Hi, this is Ryan from rapidweaverclassroom.com, and I'm pleased to bring you an overview of new features found in Rapid Weaver 7. Of course, we will go into great detail concerning these features and all features of Rapid Weaver inside of Rapid Weaver Classroom's curriculum. So in this tutorial, we're just going to do a brief flyover of what you can find in the newest version of Rapid Weaver. So let's begin right here in the source list. We now have a unified source list where we find our pages, resources, and site-wide settings. No longer do we have two separate tabs that existed in Rapid Weaver 6 to switch back and forth between the page list and the site settings. It's all right here for easy access. And so going into that, let's take a look at the settings. Inside of general, we find some new options, such as the ability to add an alt tag for the site logo. We also have a new drop zone for a banner image. And for themes that choose to support this feature, you can change the banner image site-wide through the drop zone here. And it even gives you a recommended image size for that particular theme that you have selected. There's also going to be a drop zone for the banner on a page-by-page -page basis, which we'll see in a moment. But this is the site-wide settings for how to handle that banner image in your header. And then we can, of course, also add an alt tag for that banner image. Rapid Weaver 7 also provides a very um, nice feature, which is the ability to make a portable document, meaning you can uh, contain all of the resources that you have over here in the resources area if you're using resources in your project. You can pack those into the project, have it all saved together, and that makes it mobile or portable to transfer from one machine to the other. And so you can choose to make a document portable or to unpack that document and to tell Rapid Weaver where you want it to store those resources. So that's very nice. Let's take a quick look into the advanced menu. We have a couple of new options located here. One is to generate cache busting links. This is nice because it allows um, web browsers to be notified that um, files have expired and it needs to reload files um, which will give them the latest version and so this can prevent users or visitors to your website from seeing outdated information when new web uh, pages or new information is published to your pages and so this is a great feature I recommend that you enable that. We also have the option to minify CSS and JavaScript. This just compresses all of that code to make it load faster and so this is really a speed issue for uh, page loading in browsers. So those are some new advanced options available inside of the uh, general settings. Next, let's take a look at the code section. This is a brand new layout that gives us a wide view of meta tag, CSS, JavaScript, prefix, head, and then a new section for body. For the body, you can add code right above the closing body tag, and you can do that on a site-wide basis right here inside of this area. You can see how large and open this window is now, um, the input area. Of course, that's the same for the CSS and JavaScript and those other um, coding options that we've had available before. Jumping down now to publishing, there are quite a few new features available here inside of the publishing area. We have the ability to add multiple destinations. This is very helpful because we can, for example, have our live site. For example, I could call this live site for this destination, and I could create another destination and call it, for example, test site. And so it might be the case that you could have all of this information the same between the two with the exception of the path. So for example, if your web host uses public underscore HTML for the path, then that could be the live um, site path. And then we could also have a path for testing. And so we could, for example, have it under public HTML and then slash test. And that would en enable us to have two different um, places on our server where we could publish the website. And then we could do that from the publish button here by dropping down and simply choosing which version, um, which place on the server that we wanted to publish that. So that's a great new feature that we have called destinations. And then along with publishing, we also for the first time now have the option to publish or to back up our project file. And so you can see an option here for backing up and we can choose how often that's done. And if we ever need to retrieve one of those backups, then we can click the download button to do that. So that's a very helpful new feature that is found in the publishing settings. So before we move away from this area and go into the other parts of Rapid Weaver, let's take a quick look at the preferences because there are some new options available there as well. Underneath general, we have the option to hide classic themes. So older themes that perhaps you are no longer going to use that are built into Rapid Weaver can now be hidden in the theme browser by selecting that option. So that's very helpful. 
We also have a new option to use smart quotes. It is disabled by default. This is very helpful. This prevents any HTML code that you use from being formatted incorrectly. It's a very welcome feature. Um, you may not realize you need it, but you probably do. And so it's very nice that this is an option now to disable. And so I do recommend leaving that unchecked in most cases. We also can change the theme or the code views to a dark theme, and that will place a dark um, code view in the sidebar in the page inspector. And we'll see that in a moment as I enable that. Immediately above, you see the setting for enable code completion. That was a setting that came along with Rapid Weaver 6 for um, giving you suggestions as you typed in code into the code sections of the page inspector. If you don't like that feature, you can simply disable it now as a setting in preferences. Let's now jump to the publishing tab of the preferences where we have the option to clear the page status when publishing. And so this means immediately once your website's published, Rapid Weaver will mark all of your pages as unchanged, which is helpful because it assumes that as soon as you've published, those um, pages have not been changed since. And so it marks them that way until you go and make a further change in your project. And then we also have a new advanced option for enabling upload logging. This can be helpful if you're experiencing publishing issues for troubleshooting purposes. And so hopefully you will not need to use that, but it is there just in case. And then finally, under the add-ons area, we have the option to um, change where our add-ons are stored. We can also reveal those add-ons in Finder, but if we choose to move them to another location, we can do that by selecting it in the drop-down here. Now, this is not available at the moment because I do have a project loaded here at the moment. I would need to quit out of the project, and then I could tell RapidWeaver where I wanted to store those add-ons. So if you want to control the location of the add-ons, for example, to move between machines um, more easily, then Rapid Weaver 7 does provide that as an option. So that is the new options available in Preferences. So let's jump back to this page I've added, and we can look at some of the other new features available here in Rapid Weaver 7. Let's go and take a look at the themes drawer, and I'm going to filter by new themes. New themes are considered Rapid Weaver 6 and Rapid Weaver 7 themes. We have some new ones specifically for version 7 Kiki, Lander, Off Road and Voyager. And you can also see the developers' names below those. All of these all of these themes support the new banners feature. And so if we go back into the general settings where we can drop a banner into this position, I'm going to go ahead and do that now from my downloads folder. I'm going to grab an image, simply drop it in, and we can see right here in the preview That banner is what I've just placed into that drop zone. So it's very easy to add a banner right there um, with the new themes that come with Rapid Weaver 7. Let's take a look at the inspector. We now have two view options for the inspector. We have one that docks it to the window as we've had in Rapid Weaver 6. But now we also have one that does a popover. And this will allow you to position this wherever you like. If you have a second monitor, you can move it out of the way to the second monitor. Or if you're on a smaller um, screen and it can be um, not taking up so much screen space, so much real estate there. And so you can position that how you would like. And then coming down, we see the new option for the site banner inside of the page inspector. So we can override on a page by page basis the banner image by dropping the banner here. And then we can apply an alt tag there. Under the HTML code section, we now have the body. And this is the dark theme that we've set in the preferences that I mentioned we can code with a dark uh, background if we prefer. There's also a new section for meta tags specifically. We have a dedicated field for the description tag. We have some robot settings and then here's our classic meta tag section here as well as a very cool new template option which is available and we'll talk more about that in uh, the Rapid Weaver Classroom curriculum for Rapid Weaver 7. If I jump to styles we can see a new feature that enables us to toggle closed or open different sections of the styles. So once you've set a style and you don't think you're going to want to look at it any longer, you can simply choose to toggle that closed and that can kind of clean up the view in your styles section. So look how nice that is where we can just kind of get to what we want very quickly if we want to make a change later. You also may have noticed a new button here called health check. This uh, tests the pages that are loaded into the project and gives us suggestions about which items need to be fixed. So add a favicon, 
um, improve banner accessibility, plugin updates are available, set browser title, add a description meta tag. These are just some of the types of notifications that you'll receive when you use the health check. So this really ensures that you do all of the things that you need to do before publishing your website. Um, and so that is very helpful. And then finally, Rapid Weaver 7's preview mode now supports PHP pages. This is very helpful for plugins, for example, like Rapid Cart Pro, where before we needed to go about um, previewing those pages completely outside of Rapid Weaver, those can now be previewed right here natively in Rapid Weaver itself. Rapid Weaver basically has a web server built in for the preview mode that allows the rendering of those PHP pages. So that's a very um, helpful but kind of behind the scenes new feature that you may not even realize right away. So that's a pretty quick rundown of what we have here in Rapid Weaver 7. I think it's a great upgrade, brings a lot of um, nice new features as well as addressing some other things that maybe were a little bit difficult with previous versions. And so I hope you're excited and I hope you give it a shot. So again, I'm Ryan from rapidweaverclassroom.com. I appreciate you taking the time to check this out and I hope to see you um, in class.